hello again everyone Larry back with you again and what I'm doing this afternoon I have not really before ever uh, attempted a review on Little John which uh, as you can see is running in the background oddly enough when I started to do this review the regen light comes on supposedly you're not to turn the tractor off while the regen is operating so uh, I don't know exactly how I'm going to now do the review on it with the tractor running. I may go ahead this one time and, uh, and turn the tractor off while I'm doing the review and uh, talk to you about some of the things on my uh, tractor that I call Little John. And so I think that's what we're going to do is just go ahead and turn the tractor off while I'm doing this uh, short review this afternoon and go over a few of the things that we have done to uh, Little John tell you a little bit about the tractor itself and then some of the things that we've done to Little John since uh, since I purchased it. So uh, there you have it. Let's get started on this video. Okay, the first thing that I did is uh, lower the uh, loader down just enough that you can see the model of the tractor. And let me walk around. We'll talk about that just a little bit. You can see through here, this Little John is a Model 3035D. Now the D series of tractors, the three D series of tractors for John Deere are somewhat new. What it is about this particular tractor over uh, some of the others is the fact that it is a manual transmission. I specifically chose the manual transmission over the hydrostatic. I just, I, my massive Ferguson, which I call Fergus, is a manual transmission and uh, I, I was just used to the manual transmission. I don't particularly like the whine of the hydrostatic. I don't do enough around here to really make going back and forth an issue like you would find with the hydrostatic transmission. But the main thing is I thought that the manual transmission uh, would give me just a little more uh, power to the ground and maybe a little bit more power to the PTO because as I understand it, the hydrostatic transmission is taking some of the power uh, from the tractor to run that transmission itself. So I thought again that the, um, the manual transmission was what I would prefer over the hydrostatic. Now also with the 3035D, you don't get some of the bells and whistles that you do with some of the other similar series uh, model tractors in the uh, compact tractor line. Uh, this, this tractor is just your basic tractor. Uh, not a lot of bells and whistles, but again, for me, for, for my purposes, um, one, it was affordable. I think this tractor here for me was uh, around 20, 21,000. Now the same tractor today, I, uh, a few weeks ago I checked at one of our other tractor dealerships and this tractor here is up considerably since I bought it in um, I believe it was May or June of 2020, COVID year. Uh, and it has gone up quite a bit um, since that time. Uh, so it was affordable. Again, not a lot of bells and whistles on this tractor. One of the first things that I added to the tractor was, of course, the quick connect and then the ballast box, but also added this uh, Bluetooth uh, connectivity app. Now, one of the things that you can notice here is the um, uh, GPS location of the tractor. I'm also able to keep record of my other equipment on this app. It doesn't necessarily track via Bluetooth, but I can um, 
with this particular app I can log in some of the other information on the other equipment. Here we have one of the major components of the app and this is uh, getting a real-time reading on the performance of the tractor while it is running. You see such things as engine RPM, you can see the ambient temperature outside, you can see the coolant temperature, such things as the fuel temperature, um, you can see the fuel rate, uh, we can also see the suet load that has to do with the regen process and uh, you can see whether the PTO is engaged or not. So this app has uh, several things. Looking at it here now you can see some of the um, um, codes that have appeared on the tractor for some reason or another and I talked to the people at TriGreen and they basically said that these were not uh, things to be concerned about uh, that is showing up on the app. Here I've increased the speed of the tractor and you can just see the difference in the readings on the app. For some reason we lost our audio on uh, this portion of the video so we'll just uh, talk about some of the components that are located in the operators area here. Uh, again, talking about Little John just uh, being a, a um, basic tractor, not a lot of bells and whistles. What I'm pointing to here is the range shift lever and then moving up to the forward and reverse lever. The um, range shift lever of course being from uh, uh, to low speed to high speed. And then we've got the, uh, the gear shift lever and we've got the four gears on this of uh, first, second, third, and fourth. And with the range uh, shift lever we get eight gears out of that. Then we, uh, then we have the uh, rear uh, hydraulic uh, or rear lift control lever there uh, just on the left hand side uh, which is on the right hand side of the driver. Now as you look at the seat, uh, the seat is really no non-suspension or no suspension seat. It's just basically um, a fixed place seat. Um, doesn't have the air cushion or the suspension adjustment. Go around to the, um, to the front of the tra tractor and of course you can see the grapple uh, that has been installed on the tractor and um, this is a model 300 E uh, front end loader and of course the um, the thing about the 3035D is the fact that it's not equipped uh, to install a third function so uh, as you s saw in one of our previous videos what we did was went to this uh, rear valve system here which allows us then to uh, run the hoses uh, from the rear of the tractor and I had tri-green equipment and Leeton to install this for me. I didn't do it but we run the hoses down around through underneath the uh, around the gas tank uh, underneath the um, fender well of the tractor uh, came up under the uh, floorboard then up and was attached to some of the existing hose area of the uh, and here you can see uh, where that it attaches on the front and allows us then to be able to uh, have the grapple. Here's the uh, atta attachments attachment area or where you can see that it's attached to uh, the actual hoses for the grapple itself. Now looking here we've got the um, the lever, the control lever for the loader which as I illustrated was up and down and then curl up and down. The lever that I just touched was for the um, grapple, the actual opening and 
what have you of the grapple. Uh, this may seem a little bit awkward to some, but I don't find it at all to be a problem uh, because most, and what I'm illustrating here is most of the time you've got the um, the loader uh, lever um, which has a separate uh, thumb control usually for the third function. This particular lever here is the one that does control uh, this section of the grapple uh, lifting the the actual clamp portion of the grapple and then of course the lever for the uh, loader itself is what is controlling the uh, the curl and the up and down portion that's this lever here uh, forward is down back is up left is um, uh, curl up and right is curl down and then this lever here is the one that is controlling um, the the grapple. This particular lever that I was just moving is currently not connected to anything. It's not being used for anything and you can see the connections there uh, where this lever would control. This lever that I just uh, pointed to is the only one that is um, operating and that's the one that the hoses are attached to. Now one of the things that uh, we have also done to this tractor is we installed the 3 inch boral wheel spacers. You can see those here. Um, this added about 6 inches to the rear uh, footprint of the tractor and certainly does add, in my opinion, some uh, uh, greatly add stability to the tractor and I'm backing out here so you can see ordinarily these rear wheels would be pretty much underneath the fenders on the tractor but as you can see with the uh, spacers it does uh, move the wheels out and you can see here uh, the, the additional area about that three inch spread that it has um, has moved the wheels, the rear wheels, rear tires out. Now something that I did with this tractor and I've heard um, I've heard both sides of the fence on this. I've heard from some mechanics. I've heard from some uh, what I would consider to be uh, tractor experts and I've heard comments from others about uh, what I did here and that is that I reversed the front wheels on the tractor and as you can see from looking here uh, it pretty much puts the front tires out at somewhat the same spacing as the rear tires. Um, the negatives are the cons on this uh, doing this is that it adds a lot of pressure to the front axle and uh, could be uh, asking for trouble as far as the front axle front bearings are concerned and then those on the pro side say that it does not uh, hurt at all to uh, to rotate these tires out like this uh, it's just a matter of uh, taking the tires off, changing side with them and put, putting them on in reverse. So if, if you have a comment on this uh, please feel free to um, leave that in the comment section on this um, video. But, and I've also heard some say that the front end uh, wheels don't add that much as far as the stability. That it's the rear tires that is um, what is going to be adding most of the stability to the tractor. So um, leave a comment let me know what you think about that. Uh, the tractor of course um, does have the um, clutch and it also has the uh, two brakes. A left, left hand side brake and a right hand side brake. What I'm looking at here again is the 
the loader that's on this. This is not a self-leveling loader. Uh, the Model 300E is not a self-leveling leveling loader. Uh, it does allow for you to be able to um, curl the bucket and, and in this case curl the grapple back a little bit further than the, um, the self-leveling loader does. Uh, pretty much the self-leveling loader will not allow you to be able to um, um, curl the bucket back as much. One of the things, and what I'm showing you here is the fact that the um, rear PTO has still got the rubber uh, cover on it that came from the factory, and that's because I have had no uh, PTO attachments, rear uh, attachments at all on this tractor. What I'm pointing out here is where I squirted some grease when I was greasing the tractor. I squirted it on the uh, tire and just haven't had a chance to clean it off. But I don't plan on putting any uh, rear attachments uh, on the tractor. I've got the massive Ferguson and uh, it's 53 horsepower. It allows me to be able to do everything that I need to do uh, as far as rear attachments. I've got a six foot bush hog, I've got a tiller, and um, I've got the box blade, I've got a, a greater blade, several attachments that I use on the back of uh, the Mass Ferguson that I call Fergus. Uh, here I'm showing that I do have the um, John Deere quick uh, attach or quick hitch uh, attachment. Um, the, the primarily the primary uh, use to me of this is uh, the ballast box on the back. When I do take the tractor to uh, have it serviced, the quick attach just makes it real easy for me to be able to uh, uh, hook up and unhook or unhook from the ballast box to be able to take the tractor for service or anything of that nature. Let, let me talk a little bit more about the rear ballast. I have sand inside of this uh, ballast box. I chose sand uh, for uh, I guess two reasons. Hopefully to get the weight that I needed and then secondly I didn't want to put concrete in it because as some have said once you put concrete in it uh, that's basically it. Uh, the concrete is in it. Um, this box has got a, um, a trailer hitch which I painted and as you can see haven't even used. Uh, I did add this uh, what I consider my chain bin. Um, I keep uh, a hatchet in here. I keep a, um, a hammer in here and I keep my chains, some of my logging uh, items. I've got a level in here. Just my wife will tell you I use a level a lot so I've got an old level in there. This particular ballast box, as you can see, has got the holes in it and uh, makes a great place for me to carry uh, the axe. You can see down in there, axe goes perfect in, into it. Uh, I carry my can hook in here and because uh, in moving the logs to the sawmill, uh, oftentimes I've got a can hook at the sawmill, but oftentimes I'll be doing something that I want to can hook, and so it's a great place to carry it. I did add, uh, and let me go to this. Um, this is my father in law's old, aunt. he was in the National Guard, Command Sergeant Major, by the way. And um, uh, this was an ammo box of his. 
and as you can see I've got this fastened uh, securely to the bottom of my chain box and I carry in here some of my wedges, some of my other tools and um, it just makes for a good little extra or a good toolbox uh, for the tractor. Um, this is an old bolt that is a um, furniture bolt. It had, has wood threads on this end, drilled a little bit of a hole, screwed the bolt down in there, and then it's got the, these, on the, these threads on the top. So it makes it great to take a, um, a wing nut like this and, and to, uh, to tighten it down and fasten it down. So that works out real good. Then also, I added, and if you don't have on your tractor, I highly recommend this, the, uh, the saw haul. Um, now, the, the saw haul basically comes in two parts. And in this case, I've got my uh, skill battery-powered chainsaw, but let me take this out. The saw haul is one of the best additions that I've added to the tractor. And um, you can see the scabbard here for the, um, for the saw itself and uh, protects, protects it. This is fastened on, as you can see here, to the box. And um, you can see how I fastened the back of it here uh, to the box. And this is a great addition. And I always just try to, I try to keep the saw uh, anytime I use it, uh, when I get through using it, the saw that is, I'll turn right around and put the saw right back in it just to make sure that I don't um, accidentally run over the saw. One of the cameras uh, looking at the tractor itself, it uh, looks like the camera is at an angle. The camera is actually level and the tractor is sitting on just a little bit of a slope. But um, one of the other things, and by the way, this, uh, this tractor has the 300E loader on it. The uh, lift capacity on this loader is, I'm going to say somewhere around 1100 and I'll just roughly say 1125 pounds. And of course that is calculated here at the pin, the pivot pin. But one of the things about this tractor was the lights. And primarily the problem is with a bucket on the loader. Now you get a little bit of that uh, problem out of the grapple here, but not to the extent of the bucket on the loader. Um, what I'm, the point that I'm making is this. Once you raise the bucket up to a certain point, the lights are totally useless because the bucket itself blocks the lights and, and you can't see anything. So what I did is uh, I added this um, light bar uh, this is just a tractor supply uh, light bar, and I added it in, and um, it is um, connected in with, there is a, uh, under the seat here, there, there are some uh, connections that were not, um, that were not being used, and by the way, Right here is the controller for the, um, the um, uh, John Deere app that um, I showed you a little bit earlier that I'm able to connect to. This is the Bluetooth connection. Um, actually, I'm sorry, this is the, uh, this is the Bluetooth connection here that uh, I'm able to, um, to connect to the controls of the tractor, and you saw that out just a few, a little bit ago. So there are some connections uh, down here that I was able to fasten, um, that I was able to connect to, and um, 
for the Bluetooth operation and for this light bar. And I really do like the light bar. And as I said, it is, um, it is connected to the, uh, to the switch, the light switch on the tractor. Let me go back around here and I think you can see this pretty good. Um, when you turn it down to this position here, uh, the light is on. And then whenever you turn back up to um, your flashers, the light bar is off. So um, that works out. That works out real good. Again, uh, go down here. The light bar is on, and uh, and you can see um, you can see the other camera out front. But um, that does a great job of lighting up, and uh, it it's up high enough that um, uh, it it doesn't interfere with your head and your implement on the f front. Um, is out of the way also. Let me, something um, I kind of like too about the light bar is um, I mounted it underneath. I'm climbing up on the tractor so bear with me a minute. I mounted it underneath so that any limbs or anything um, wouldn't affect it. And these brackets I got from uh, boltonhooks.com. Um, they made these and they're, they're, they're designed for putting on the rops and putting uh, uh, different things on uh, light lights on the, on the rops themselves. So um, this is in two pieces and you can see right here where they, they clamp down on the rops themselves and uh, just makes a great, um, this is the bracket that came with the light bar and it fastened right into there. There was um, holes in the bottom as you can see right here. There were holes in the bottom of the uh, of the bracket that I was able to uh, fasten the light bar on with, and then I routed the cable down through um, some of this um, plastic conduit. And uh, by the way, that's what that's what all that extra is there. The cable actually comes out of the conduit in a short place, but I, um, I, I just, instead of cutting it off, I, I just folded it up and, and um, used a, a zip, zip tie to, um, to tuck it underneath there. Um, Four-wheel drive up, puts the tractor in four-wheel drive on, on this model. Um, here we have the PTO lever. Uh, just simple uh, engage, disengage, and so on. Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, just did a little year and a half review on uh, Little John here. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, be sure to give us a thumbs up, and as always, uh, share it with a friend. And because I've covered a lot of different things on Little John here on this in this review, I'd appreciate it if you. Uh, if you do have an opinion or a suggestion, if you'd leave it in the comment section down below. Also, don't forget to um, subscribe to the channel. I certainly would appreciate that. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Look forward to seeing you the next time. And until then, this is Larry. Thank you, folks. Have a great one. Bye-bye, everybody.